Good day and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Atu Francis de Bam. Um, today we're going to be taking on redox titration calculations. We've dealt with volumetric in volumetric analysis, which we have already treated most of these um, areas of the calculations. Redox is part of it. Only difference that is that it deals with a net equation half cell equation, other than the usual kind of, um, um, how do you call them, neutralization reactions, where we have our salt and water, but in redox it seems different. And another unique thing which makes it beautiful is um, the formula tends to take a different look. But before I talk about the formulas, redox titration deals with the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. For example, we have the potassium tetrazomanganate 7, potassium heptazodichromate 6, we have the iodine, we have the potassium iodide, and all of that. And many a time we use our potassium tetrazomanganate 7, it's a strong oxidizing agent, and uh, because of its strong nature, we it tends to oxidize the substances or the compounds in which you react with. So many a time, if it is too powerful, especially when you use it with a chloride compound, which is a reducing, it oxidizes it. So in such a situation, we tend to use another, uh, other call it oxidizing agent, and we will afterward apply what we call it an, um, an indicator. Most often, Redox titration is self-indicating. We only acidify the reducing agent in the course of reaction using H2SO4. But all things being equal, the calculations therein are the same in all ramifications because we can still use the redox principle to calculate for our percentage of water crystallization, uh, percentage purity, normal uh, uh, molar concentration, and uh, mass concentration and so on, even amount in all of that. So let's see what we can do and then we'll move on, all right? So in the formula, like I said, in the previous, we use this formula, uh, CAVA over CBVB equals to NAND, when we are treating with normal volumetric analysis calculations. But in redox, instead of using concentration of the acid, we see concentration of the oxidizing agent, volume of the oxidizing agent, concentration of the reducing agent, volume of the reducing agent, equals to the number of moles of oxidizing agent over number of moles of reducing agent. So that's what it is. Since the calculation of the titration is principally based on um, the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. And quite often, the oxidizing agent, KMNO4, is often in the burek and other oxidizing agents. But there are certain times where the reducing agent, which we know, tends to be in the burek as the question will go, as um, it suits them best. So we are going to take questions and see what happens and most also um, somebody's student um, commented that uh, I should be writing the questions it's good to write but just tends to take us time and space but then I will what I'm going to do now is to read the whole question so that even if you're going through the question by listening to the question you can easily write it down if you want to then I will now bring out the variables which I've read and state them out as a given. With the variables alone, knowing that the oxidizing agent have these uh, parameters given, the reducing agent have these parameters given, you do not need the whole question like read it, so you can just tend to start solving them as the case may be. So let's see what we can do. Uh, first question, I will read it before I state out the given. A is a solution of 
potassium tetrazomagnesium B is 0.02 mole per dn cube of ethane dioxide acid. Um, and solution C is 1.0 mole per dn cube of concentrated H2SO4. So the corn H2SO4 will be used to um, acidify the system. If 25 cm cube of solution B gives 16.5 cm cube of A for complete oxidation, from the equation of reaction below, which is given, I will state it out, we should calculate the concentration of solution A in mole per dn cube. A is the oxidizing agent. Concentration of B in GDN cube, the reducing agent. And also have the third question here, which is amount of A in the average volume of acid used. So we have done all this calculation, calculate concentration of this, this and that. So I mean, likely not just solving everything down. I can leave some for us to try and see what we can do. So now let's take out the given. I will write out the given. So A is a solution of KMnO4. This is A. It's KMnO4. A is a solution of KMnO4. B is of a thin dioxide acid. H2C2O4. Yes. Now, B is 0 0.02 mole per dn cube. Okay, now, concentration of the reducing agent is 0 0.02 mole per dn cube. So these are the given parameters. Okay, solution C, blah, blah, blah. If 25 of solution B, volume of the reducing agent is 25 cm cube, react with 16.5 of A, volume of the oxidizing agent is, is 16.5 cm cube. Of A for complete oxidation. From the equation of reaction, let me take the equation of reaction so that I'll be able to get the number of moles of oxidizing agent, number of moles of reducing agent from the equation of reaction. Here is our equation 2 and O4. Minus plus 5C2. O4 minus 2 plus 16 hydrogen plus gives us 2 mn 2 plus plus 10 CO2 plus 8 H2O. So this is the question of reaction. Okay. From here, this is the oxidizing agent. We have two moles. It's two. Reducing agent, we have five. Now, concentration of the oxidizing agent is what we don't know. So that is it. We've established that. So questions. A. We should calculate the concentration of solution A in mole per dn cube, which is concentration of the word oxidizing agent. So, permit me to take this equation out. We have gotten what we want. I want it to make. So, from our, we're looking for this. We use our formula. Concentration of oxidizing agent volume of oxidizing agent, concentration of reducing agent, volume of reducing agent is equal to number of moles of oxidizing agent over number of moles of reducing agent. So for us to make this a subject, 
I have my concentration of oxidizing agent to be equals to concentration of reducing agent, volume of reducing agent, number of moles of oxidizing agent over volume of oxidizing agent and number of moles of reducing agent. And this is equals to concentration of reducing agent is 0 0.02 mole per dm cube. 0 0.02 mole per dm cube. Volume of reducing agent is 25. 25 cm cube times number of moles of oxidizing agent. Number of moles of oxidizing agent is 2. Volume of oxidizing agent is 16.5 cm cube. That's number of moles of reducing agent, which is 5. And this is equals to. We use our calculator here. 0 0.02 times 25 times 2 equals to this. Divide by 16.5 divide by 5. Zero point zero one two one. Zero point zero one two one. More per GM cube. Okay. If we have that's our first, the second one concentration of solution B in GDM cube. So let me put that down. Here is. 0 0.0121 mole per dm cube. Now, concentration of B in GDM cube. In GDM cube, let me clean the board, please. Con of B in GDM cube. This is equal to this. Now, it's equal to GDMQ, which is mass concentration of the beta, of the ethane dioxide acid, which is the reducing agent, is molar con con of B times relative molecular mass of B. The molar con of B is 0 0.02 mole per dm cube times the relative molecular mass of this. Hydrogen is 1 times 2 is 2 plus oxygen is 12 times 2 is 24 plus, sorry, that's carbon. Oxygen is 16 times 4, which is uh, 64. So 64 g mole. And this is equal to 0 0.02 mole per dm cube times 90, 90 g mole. And this is equal to 0 0.02, 0 0.02. It's equals to 1.8, 1.8 GDM cube. So let's verify that A is a solution of KMNO4, B is 0 0.02 mole per dm cube of ethane dioxide. So we've done the needful. Now C, my C is assignment. It's for you because we've treated amount. We remember the formulas for amount. We have mass over, um, yeah, mass in gram over relative molecular mass in GMO. And we also have amount to be molar content times volume. So the question here is asking you to calculate the amount. C. 
calculate the amount of A in the average volume of A used. Amount. If you look here, you can just see the solution. So that's question number one. Let's take our second question. Question number two, I'll read it again. 0 0.02 mole per dm cube of KMNO4 react with 27.52 GDM cube of ion 2 tetrazo sulfate 6, uh, hydrated ion 2 tetrazo sulfate 6, and 25 cm cube of the reducing agent react with 25.63 cm cube of the oxidizing agent. If the equation of reaction is this, we should calculate the number of moles of water of crystallization in ion sulfate, ion 2 sulfate, and calculate the percentage of water of crystallization B. C, calculate the percentage of ion 2 in ion 2 tetrazo sulfate 6, um, I think, heptahydrate. So, which means they are giving us a clue that our final answer is supposed to be a, a heptahydrate. Now, let's state out the given. KMNO4 is A. Okay, let's just call it here. KMNO4. This is 0 0.02 mole per dm cube. Concentration of oxidizing agent is 0 0.02 mole per dm cube. We are with 27.52 GDM cube of ion 2 tetrazo sulfate 6 hybrid. Okay. We are with 27.52 GDM cube. Okay. This is the GDM cube of the hydrated of the hydrated so, there are about the least. Um, 27.52. 27.52 GDM cube. And 25 of the reducing agent, volume of reducing agent is 25 cm cube. Let's say we act with, okay, we are with 25.6. Volume of oxidizing agent is 25.6 cm cube. If the equation of reaction is given to be this, so we are using that to get our number of moles of oxidizing agent, number of moles of reducing agent. Okay, now this is our equation of reaction now. We have MnO4 minus plus 5 ion 2 plus 8 hydrogen plus gives us our MN2 plus plus 5 ion 3 plus plus 4 moles of water. Okay, from the equation of reaction, we know our number of moles of oxidizing agent is 1, and number of moles of reducing agent is 5. From there, the say we should calculate the number of moles of water of crystallization in ion 2 tetrazo sulfate 6. So this is a not very direct question because I think we've not gotten a lot of the parameters required or they didn't give us. So they are just asking us straight up to get what they want us to get. But there are, I think there are a lot of other things we have to do before we get there. So let's look at the question again. We have concentration of the acid of the oxidizing agent. We do not have concentration of the reducing agent. And they are asking us for uh, percentage of water of crystallization, which means that we have to get, they're giving us the mass form of the hydrated. We have to get the mass form of the anhydrous, which is just this. When we get the mass form of the anhydrous, before you get it, you need to get the molar concentration of the 
producing agent, which will help you to get the mass on of the anhydrous. See, that's the technicality. So, we must have to know our concentration of the reducing agent. That's what we get first before the mass form of anhydrous, which we don't know. So, let's start with this first. For us to do that, I have to write out our equation. I have, please let me take this guy out. I have concentration of oxidizing agent times volume of oxidizing agent over concentration of reducing agent times volume of reducing agent is equal to number of moles of oxidizing agent over number of moles of reducing agent. I'm looking for concentration of reducing agent. So, my concentration of reducing agent is equal to concentration of oxidizing agent times volume of oxidizing agent times number of moles of reducing agent over volume of reducing agent times number of moles of oxidizing agent. And this is equal to concentration of oxidizing agent is given to be 0 0.02 mole per dm cube per dm cube times volume of oxidizing agent is 25.6 25.6 cm cube times number of moles of reducing agent reducing agent is 5 over volume of reducing agent is volume volume is 25 25 cm cube times number of moles of oxidizing agent oxidizing agent is 1 and this is equals to let's use our calculator we have 0 0.02 times 25.6 times 5 is equals to this divided by 25 we have 0 0.102 0 0.102 mole per dm cube. Okay, so concentration of reducing agent is 0 0.102 mole per dm cube. If we have gotten this, now I have to calculate for the mass concentration of the anhydrous. Mass concentration is uh, molar cone times related molecular mass, which means I'll be looking for the related molecular mass of this. I know why I'm doing that because the formula says related molecular mass of hydrated of a mass cone of hydrated is equal to related molecular mass of anhydrous of a mass cone of anhydrous, as the case may be. So now let us get the uh, mass cone of the anhydrous. I claim this. Now, mass form of the anhydrous salt. Anhydrous reducing agent is equal to the molar form of that times relative molecular mass. The molar cone is given to be 0 0.102 mole per dm cube. The relative molecular mass of base ion, ion should be 56, if I am not mistaken. Okay, number two. Ion, ion, ion. I didn't state it, but I think it's 56. Let's, let's go on. So we call it 56 plus sulfur is 32 plus oxygen times, oxygen is 60 times for which is 64. Okay. Now let me add that. 56 plus 32 plus 64. See what's 152 times 0. Point 102 15.5 okay this is 15.5 all right 5 gdm cube 
all a microbes. Okay, normally um, in almost every question, when you're, they give you this element or compound, they give you the atomic masses so that you'll be able to determine your relative molecular mass. But so probably I forgot, I didn't take note of that, and uh, we have to move on. All right, what well, again, we have gotten this, let me clean. Now, we have gotten, they are asking us for the number of moles of water of crystallization, which is the X. Yeah, we want to know what is the number of X. Is it decahydrate 10, pentahydrate 5, heptahydrate 7, and so on? That's what we're looking for. So let's get to it. All right, let me clean this. I've gotten that value. Did I put it up there? GDMQ of, of anhydrous is 15.5. 15.5 GDMQ. Now, I can take out this. Now, to get our X, we say, the formula says for a uh, number of moles of water of crystallization says um, relative molecular mass of hydrated. Let me just shorten it that way. Over mass con of hydrated Relative molecular mass of anhydrous mass con of anhydrous. Now, what is the relative molecular mass of the hydrated? Oh, relative molecular mass, which is this. I calculated it to be 150 something, 152. Yeah, I think so. 152. Let me start again. Um, 64. 64 plus 32 plus 56. 152. Okay, that's the relative molecular mass of this. Plus this phenomenon. So the relative molecular mass of hydrated is 152. 152 plus X. 18 x 18 why is it 18 h2o have a relative molecular mass of this is 1 times 2 plus 16 that is 18 so that is it yeah. so now what is the mass concentration of the hydrated hydrated there is 27.52 27.52 this is equals to relative molecular mass of anhydrous, which is 152, only this side, anhydrous, only this side, no water of crystallization. Hydrated contains this water. So I'm looking for this alone, which is 152. 152 over the mass concentration of that is 15.5. 15.5. Okay. Now, I'm cross multiplying. I want to make X a subject, okay? So I have my 15 open bracket, 152 plus X18, close, is equals to 20, 27.52 times 152. So I'm going to expand 15 times 152. 2280. Here yeah, is 2280 plus. Uh oh. This is 15.5, sorry. Not 15. 15. This times this is 15.5. 15.5. So 15.5, 15.5 times 152, 152. Is 2356. 2356 plus 15.5 times 18. 15.5 times 18 is equals to 279. 279 X is equals to 27. 
27.52 times 152 is equal to um, 4183. 418304. Okay, let me check this out. Over here. Now, I want to make base the subject. So I have 279x is equal to 418304. 4183.04 minus 2356. 2356. Now, 279x is equal to 4183 minus 2356. 2356. That is 1827. 1827. Point zero four. Now x is equals to one eight two seven point zero four divided by two seven nine, and my x is equals to divided by two seven nine two seven nine equals to six point five six point five, which is approximately seven. So my x is seven. So the number of moles of water crystallization is 7, which means this is ion 2 tetrons of surface 6 heptahydrin. If I are ion to replace that. So we've gotten that. You know, like I said, the question is not a direct question. You have to solve other things to get to where you're looking for, where you're going to. So we must have to try with caution in order not to make mistakes. Now let's take... Um, We've just gotten a number of moles of water of crystallization. Now let's calculate the percentage of water of crystallization. Now, percentage of water of crystallization. Let me clean the board so that we can get it right. Now, this is water of crystallization. To get a percentage of this, it is this, which is the water, all over the total compound times 100. So now I have my Percentage of water of crystallization, water of crystallization, just okay, of crystallization is equals to X water over F2SO4 dot X water times 100. X water is 7, X, we got our X to be 7, 7 times 18, all over, I think this is 152, 152 plus 7, 18, times 100. Now, I want to break that. Now, let me explain this. The relative molecular mass of this compound is 152. Here is 18, x is 7, 7 times 18, and the same thing happens here, 7 times 18. So I will be having, let me see, when I do that, what am I going to get? 7 times 18 is 126. 126, okay, now plus 152 is 278. Now, this divided by this. Again, I say 7 times 18, 126 divided by 278 times 100. 45.3. This is 45.3%. So that is the percentage of water of crystallization on the redox. Now, the last question will be taken as an assignment. We should calculate the percentage of ion 2 in ion 2 heptahydrate. So, 
This is ion 2 heptahydrate SO4.7 H2O. So this is what we got as our X. The number of moles of water crystallization is seven. So they have replaced it and knew that it's going to be seven even when we haven't calculated it. So then they are asking you for the percentage of ion in this whole compound. Remember, when we're looking for the percentage of water, we took water over the total compound. So when you're looking for this, what do you do? So that's our assignment to that end. So we're going to take our next question, which is question number three. Let's see if we have more. Okay. Let me take out this. So question three says, 0 0.019 Potassium heptazodichromate 7 react with 6.0 GDM cube of impure ethane diol acid solution. So this time around, we're dealing with percentage purity. You see that um, we can use redox to calculate anything we want. That's what we're seeing right now. 25 cm cube of ethane diol acid react with 23.50 cm cube of KMnO4. If the equation of reaction is given to be whatever it is here, we should calculate the percentage impurity of a tain diode acid. So that's a direct kind of question, but we need to do one or two conversions to get there. So let's take the given. I have my KMnO4 here. So let's say 0 0.019 kilo, uh, mole per gm cube of this. So the volume, the concentration of oxidizing agent is 0 0.019 mole per gm cube. React with 6 gram of ethene diol acid. So we have our H2 C2O4, the GDN cube of impure, impure ethane diol acid 6.0 GDN cube. Zero GD of impure ethane diol acid solution. 25 of, yes, 25 of ethane diol acid, which is the volume, volume of the reducing agent is 25 cm cube. Of the thing that I react with 23.5, volume of the oxidizing agent is 23.5 cm cube. Or this. If the equation of reaction is given to be this, so for the equation of reaction, we'll be able to get number of moles of oxidizing agent, number of moles of reducing agent. So let's get the equation of reaction, which is 2. MnO4 minus plus 5C2O4 2 minus plus 4 hydrogen plus gives us 2 Mn 2 plus plus 10 CO2 plus 8 moles of water. Remember, this redox equation, we fitted it in, in a particular topic here, part 1 and 2 of balancing of redox equation. So I do not need to start balancing it. It's going to take my time. I just have to balance it before coming here so that I'll just be quick. So if in case you do not know how to balance this, go back to that video of ours, which is balancing of redox equation and study it. I have part one and two for this. So you're going to cover all the areas required, okay? So now from here, the number of moles of the oxidizing agent is two. Here, that of reducing agent is five. So we we'll have that. So now I can claim, so that I can turn to other questions. Now, having said that, we should calculate the percentage impurity of a tain dioxide. Now, percentage impurity 
we have the mask on. Remember, percentage impurity. We start with percentage purity, which is the mask on of pure over impure times 100. And percentage purity plus percentage impurity is equal to 100. So if we have gotten the percentage purity, we insert it into the second formula, which is percentage purity plus impurity equals 100, and make impurity the subject. So first, we have to get our percentage impurity that will be able to apply the uh, formula, or yeah, the formula to get what we want. But before we get the percentage purity, we need the concentration of the reducing agent which will help us to get a mass con of the pure ethane diol because what we have is impure. Without that, we ain't going nowhere, so we have to put that down. So now, I will have to put it this way, that the concentration of the reducing agent is what we should look for first. So, it's kind of complicated. You have to get one thing, then go get another, then move straight to what they're asking you. But you have to pay attention to that. If you know all the formulas, you know how to apply them simultaneously. So let's see how we get the concentration of the reducing agent, which will help us to get the mass count of the pure. So for us to do that, remember our formula again, concentration of oxidizing agent and volume of oxidizing agent equals to concentration of reducing agent times volume of reducing agent is equals to number of moles of oxidizing agent over number of moles of reducing agent. So, I'm calculating concentration of the reducing agent. So my concentration of the reducing agent will be concentration of oxidizing agent times volume of oxidizing agent times number of moles of reducing agent over volume of reducing agent times number of moles of oxidizing agent. So this is equals to Concentration of oxidizing agent 0 0.019, 0 0.019 mole per dm cube times volume of oxidizing agent is 23.5, 23.5 cm cube times number of moles of reducing agent is 5, all over volume of reducing agent, reducing it, uh oh. Yeah, volume of reducing agent is 25. 25 cm cube times number of moles of oxidizing agent is 2. Okay. So if this is what it is, then this is all equals to this. So we have a 0 0.019 times 23.5. Okay. Times 5. Divide by 50, 0 0.0447. This is 0 0.0447 mole per dm cube. So, concentration of the reducing agent now is 0 0.0447 mole per dm cube. Now we've gotten our molar concentration, so now to get the mass form of the pure, which is supposedly supposed to be lower than this. So let's see how we're going to do that. Mass form of the pure, that one is impure, it is dioxide, so we'll look for that of pure. So okay. mass form of pure H2C2O4 is equal to molar con times relative molecular mass of that. So the molar con is 0 0.0447 mole per dm cube times the relative molecular mass of base. Hydrogen is 1 times 2, which is 2, plus carbon is 12 times 2. 24 plus 16 times 4, which is 64 G mole. So this is equal to 0 0.0447 mole per dm cube times 90 G mole. 
So let's see what we have. 2.04465 times 90 is 4.0185. 4.0185. Or three significant figure four point zero one or zero four point zero two. Let's just leave it approximately zero two GDMQ of PO eighteen by your person. So now I have my GDMQ of PO to be four point zero two. GDMQ. Now, what is the percentage purity first? Then we'll get the impurity. Now, percentage purity equals to mass of pure. So let me just call it pure over impure times 100. Mass form of pure is 4.02. 4.02 GDMQ. Mass term of impure is 6.0 GDMQ times 100. And this is 4.02 divided by 6 times 100. 67. So this is 67% of pure ethane diol. Okay, so if that is 67, they are asking us of the percentage impurity. Therefore, our last formula, remember this is 67, let's not forget that, 67% of percentage purity. So what is percentage impurity? That was the question. Now, percentage impurity plus percentage purity is equal to 100. Now, percentage impurity plus 67 is equal to 100. Therefore, percentage impurity is equal to 100 minus 67, which is equal to. So this is 100 minus 67, which is 33. So this is 33% impurity. So the level of impurity is 33%. So the, percent, the purity rate was very high. Let's put it that way. So, we're going to take, let's call it a last, supposedly. Okay, I have two more questions. The last one should be taken as an assignment. But let's take this one. Question four. So, let me clean both. The question says, if KMNO4 of solution O, so this is my solution, is O, is called KMNO4. O for the nitrogen, I suppose. Real with 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. Um, ion 2 ammonium sulfate has a hydrate. Our solution R. This is R. To be NH4. Okay. S O okay S O four dot ion two sulfate dot six moles of water as as R. So R for reducing agent, suppose. And they say the concentration of that is 0.1 mole. So I have concentration 
of the reducing agent to be 0.1 mole per gn cube. Okay, we have 0.1 mole of ion 2 ammonium sulfate as solution arrow and 25 cn cube of arrow. Volume of reducing agent is 25 cn cube arrow gives 24.50 of O. Volume of oxidizing agent is 24.550 of cn cube of the oxidizing agent. If the equation of reaction is this, so we will be able to get the number of moles of oxidizing agent, number of moles of reducing agent. From the equation of reaction, I have my usual Mn O4 minus plus 5 I of 3 plus plus 8 hydrogen plus gives us Mn 2 plus plus 5 I am 3 plus plus formula of water. So from here, oxidizing agent is 1, reducing agent is 5. Also, one can ask you, okay, let me not go further. There are other questions here we're going to attend to. So let me take this out. We've got to do this. Now, they say calculate molar, con molar concentration of the oxidizing agent. Concentration of oxidizing agent, molar con. We don't know. That's what they say first we should calculate. So to do that, we have our formula concentration of oxidizing agent, volume of oxidizing agent, concentration of reducing agent, volume of reducing agent, is equals to number of moles oxidizing agent and number of moles of reducing agent. It says, concentration of oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent is equal to concentration of reducing agent times volume of reducing agent times number of moles of oxidizing agent over volume of oxidizing agent times number of moles of reducing agent. Okay. Okay, this is equal to concentration of reducing agent is 0 0.1 mole per gm cube. Volume of reducing agent is 25 cm cube. Number of moles of oxidizing agent 1. Volume of oxidizing agent is 24.5, 24.5 cm cube. Number of moles of reducing agent is 5. This is the question. So let's begin. 0 0.1 times 25 equals to this, divided by 24.5. Draw by 5. 0 0.0204. 0 0.0204 mole per dn cube. Okay, now this is 0 0.0204. Mole per dn cube. Okay, let's proceed. Next question. The mass form of oxidizing agent. So covering that, let's see the mass form. Mass form of oxidizing agent, the GDM cube of this. Mass form. of O is equals to the molar form of O 
transivulative molecular mass of food. Now, the molar cone is 0 0.0204 mole per dm cube times the relative molecular mass of KNNO4. Let me see if it's given. If it's not, then we have to find it. Manganese is 55. Potassium is 39. So let's go. 0 0.0204 mole per dm cube times 39 plus 55 uh, for this. Plus oxygen times this is 64. 39 plus 55 plus 64 is 158. 158 G mole. Zero point zero two zero four mole per dm cube, and this is equals to one fifty eight times zero point zero two zero four is okay three point two two three point two two g dm cube. Okay, now I come here, I have 3.22 GDN cube of the oxidizing agent. Next question. It says the mass cum of R. The mass cum of R. Okay. Assignment. Then amount of R in one volume of R use. Okay, the C is an assignment. It says the mass cone of R. Now, what is mass concentration? The smaller cone times relative molecular mass. So you're going to calculate the relative molecular mass of this times the molar cone of this, and you get your answer. Probably I've told you everything. The D say amount of R. So let me clean the board and get our amount. So the D amount of R is equal to molar cum of R times volume volume in DNQ. The molar cum of R is 0 0.1 mole per DNQ. The volume is uh, 25, 25 over 1,000, and converting it to DMQ. And this is 0 0.1 mole per DMQ times 0 0.25, whatever. 25 divided by 1,000. So, yeah, 0 0.025. 025 dnq. Now this is equals to that times 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is 2.5 times 2.5 times 10 raised to the minus 3 mole. The unit is in mole. So let's take our last question for the day. Let me explain the ball. The last question, which is going to be our assignment, so I'm going to read it carefully so we pay attention so we don't make mistakes. Sodium triazosulfate 4 is put in the burette and a known volume of iodine is prepared into the conical flux. Remember, iodine is the oxidizing agent here. But it is prepared into the conical flask and starch solution is used as indicator. If the end point of the reaction is 24 cm cube, so, okay, which is the volume of the reducing agent is the end point because that's what is in the pure. Why the concentration of the 
arrow point A, that is the reducing agent, is 0 0.100 mole per dn cube. So let me just state them out. So I have sodium trihydrosulfate 4. Okay, let me just give us an equation of reaction first. We have the oxidizing agent. We have our reducing agent. But our equation of reaction is 2 S2 O3 2 minus plus iodine gives us S2 O6 2 minus plus 2 iodine negative. Now, we have the oxidizing and the reducing agent. Let's get it. Sodium trihydrosulfate 4 is the reducing agent. Is put, is the reducing agent. Is put in the bread and a known volume of iodine is prepared into the conical flats. Iodine is the oxidizing agent. So since it is the one that is being prepared into the conical flats, the volume of the oxidizing agent here is always 25 cm cube. And the volume of the reducing agent is the daily to us to be somewhere 24. 24 cm cube. That's the end point. We didn't state it clearly. The number of moles of oxidizing agent. This is our oxidizing agent. This is our reducing agent. The number of moles of this is one. That of uh, number of moles of reducing agent here is two. Okay, let me see if I've given you everything. If the end point of the reaction is 24, why the concentration of the reducing agent is 0 0.1 reducing agent? The concentration is 0 0.1. Concentration of the reducing agent is 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. Okay. Calculate the concentration of the oxidizing agent. Yeah. The mass form of oxidizing agent. Yeah. So that is your assignment. Let me read it one more time for the sake of reading. Sodium trihydrosulfate 4 is put in a burette and a known volume of Iodine is prepared into the conical flux and starch solution is used as indicator. If the end point of the reaction is 24 cm cube, why the concentration of the reducing agent is 0 0.1 mole per dm cube? Calculate the concentration of the oxidizing agent, the mass form of oxidizing agent, and so on. The equation of reaction was given earlier, so I only clean part of it. So you can always get it is there. So I guess strongly we've done justice to what is obtainable in the redox um, titrational calculations. So we can still use our redox to calculate for percentage purity, water crystallization, amount, um, mass communicate, uh, mass concentration, molar concentration, whatever it is. But we must get it right that the, the, the formula is not the CA, concentration of the acid, it's concentration of the oxidizing agent. So it's different. Times volume of oxidizing agent over concentration of reducing agent over volume of reducing agent. The second thing goes the number of moles of oxidizing agent to number of moles of reducing agent. So by so doing, we must recognize our oxidizing agent, our reducing agent, and the equation of reaction most often is given. If it is not given, I have treated it in one of my videos. You can go there to study to refresh your mind. So in case you come across a question that doesn't have equation of reaction, you will know how to balance that. So aside, I don't think there is anything strange or new in the course of what we're doing. But then, I wish you the best. Don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. See you some other time.